Yeah, we've heard that song a few times in the last couple of weeks. Let's head right up to Knoxville and talk with Phillies legend Richie Ashburn. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Tony Basilio, show us the shirt. (laughs) (laughs) So Tony's a Phillies fan, and he's proud and rightfully so. Congrats. Man, I am – I can't believe the sports season. I just can't even believe it. Can't believe it. (laughs) You know, what your Phillies were were the Braves of a year ago. They may not have been the best team, but they got hot at the right time. But you know what? The Braves had an excellent ball club, you know, deep. And um, it's interesting, you know, having seen the Braves. I wonder if Acuna is on that team if they do that last year after watching his act this postseason. Boy, it was uh, not good. No, it wasn't good. That's not good. It wasn't good. Okay, so let's get to the business at hand. Yeah. It's now been, what, nine, ten days since Tennessee beat Alabama. What is Knoxville like right now? It is literally on fire. Um, And and people are coming up with all kinds of amazing stuff. And they're digging into their record books. And there's just, you know, all kinds of really, really, really fun things that people are. uh, I'm trying to find you a couple things. I have a couple little nuggets. Here's one. So Tennessee is currently working on if they get a victory this weekend with Kentucky as a double digit favorite. They're working on an eight, no start times. Tennessee started eight, no, in the modern era. And this is generous. Okay. 1951, 1956, 1998. And this season, that's what we're talking about here. It has been a long time. And these are uh, few and far between uh, these types of deals. And these people are really excited, and they should be. They really should be. Are you at all worried about this team maybe looking a little too far to Athens, Georgia, and not enough to Kentucky? No. No, this coach isn't going to allow them to do that. I mean, they were pretty sharp last week for Tennessee Martin. This guy has the ability to get his kids to focus minute to minute. And and that's what they do. And that's who they are. And that's how they play. And it's pretty remarkable. Um, they don't go into business for themselves. There's not a lot of me people on this thing. And, and I think it's led by Hendon Hooker. You know, one of the things they asked Hendon Hooker last week after the game was, So what did you think? You know, you come out at halftime. What did you think? He said, I love seeing everybody else get a chance to play. A lot of people in this locker room work hard. And I love seeing everybody get an opportunity. And the thing about Hendon Hooker, when he says that is, he means it. So this team kind of has that. They play for each other. It's um, it's a unique deal, what they have going here. Watson, I'm going to turn it to you because the two of you guys have been like magic in the last Uh eight, ten weeks. So take it away. Tony, I'm a I'm a little more concerned than you. That I think this is the biggest coaching week for Tennessee of the season so far. Kentucky hates Tennessee. This is their game. Tennessee could be 0 and 7. And this is Kentucky's game. And they see this they had an open date. Believe me, it's going to be the absolute best shot Kentucky can throw. I think they are the toughest team to play so far. I believe of the defenses they played, Kentucky will do the best job over LSU and Alabama. Uh, Kentucky can't score with them, but Tennessee's got to play good, Tony. I'm telling you, and they got to be ready to go, and there's so much talk about Georgia. I've been in these situations before, and I'm uh, they've got to do a, This is the most – motivation that the coaches have got to get involved with in any game so far this year. LSU, no big problem. Alabama, absolutely no big problem. But Tennessee don't look at Kentucky right now the same way Kentucky looks at Tennessee. That's no disrespect to Kentucky. That's just Tennessee is in the top four. They're third in the country, and they're fixing to play number two. Just human nature would tell you look out, so – yeah, well, I mean, 
you know, Watson, at the end of the day, I, I agree with you. I, I think the issue, though, and, and the issue is going to be uh, from from our standpoint here is this team so far has been able to take care of those things. Now, last year's game was 45-42. Wondell Robinson's no longer uh, there. But Kentucky does do some things that are scary. I think the issue Kentucky's going to have in this football game is how do I keep my quarterback clean and how do I keep him upright? Because I think Tennessee is going to continue their formula of bringing five, sometimes bringing six, throwing pressure at him with the thought being our secondary's not any better than it was, you know, a couple of weeks ago or any better that's going to be a couple of weeks from now. Um, which is one of the things I know, Watson, that you've liked the entire time, which is the aggressiveness with which these guys play on both lines of scrimmage. And I think that continues this weekend. But I do agree with you from the standpoint that, look, when you haven't been in this spot before, and I just said we've only had since 1951. I mean, I'm only going, I'm only going back 70, 72 uh, years of football here. So what, what am I, you know, what, what do we know? But Tennessee hasn't had, they've had three of these starts in 71 years. So obviously you're walking into uncharted territory and you're also in a spot where this is kind of a gift. You weren't supposed to be here, but you're right. How do you handle it? How will they handle it? Um, will they handle it? Yep. You know, the one thing that hasn't happened here yet that I'm still waiting to happen, and I'm not trying to speak it into existence. I'm just, I'm just um, making an observation. We have not seen them in the hype era play a game where they weren't really sharp offensively. Yeah, maybe sooner a little later, bit early with Milton. Hey, sooner or later, you're going to play. Your quarterback, sooner or later, has got to turn a ball over three or four times in a game. And this guy just hasn't done it. I mean, this hooker guy just, you know, he had two against Alabama and one of them was kind of bad luck, but um, it hadn't happened. Well, and I, I will add to it, um, Tony, I think that uh, the big part to me is Kentucky sitting there and they're saying, we've got to rush for 200 yards or more in this game. So I think it's more off of their running game. If Tennessee controls Kentucky running the ball, mm-hmm. This won't be a close game. If Kentucky gets the running game going, mm-hmm. eats clock, shortens the game, mm-hmm. uh, and that's their style. But, Tony, leading to something else real quick, because I know we don't have a lot of time. Right now, to me, the, the offense Tennessee runs is the most quarterback-oriented offense right now in the country. The kid's getting a lot of credit for what he's doing, and I think he's got the best skill players around him in the country. I don't think anybody's total <laughs> set of running backs, receivers, or any better that I've seen. I've watched a lot of games, and I don't see anybody that's got better talent around him. But this offense is set up. I'll give you a quick example. He has they, – they give him four different things. on Could be any one of four things on every play. And it's decisions he's got to make before this ball snap and after. They'll give him a play run, and he can check to a pass. They'll give him a play where it's a pass, and he – Right. Then the second way they do it is they'll say, okay, just run this play. He doesn't have anything to do with that. Just call the play and run it. But then the third two things are the hardest. They'll give him a run with a pass, either a quick pass or behind the line of scrimmage. The ball snapped, and he doesn't know a lot of times what he's going to do before the ball snapped. And then they'll give him a run with a deeper pass. And if he sees he wants to throw the deeper pass, he's got to trigger something to the lineman not to run the play, but don't get three yards past the line of scrimmage. This is all on Hendon Hooker. And this kid is getting it done right now. This, this is as much as you can possibly put on a quarterback in college football, what Tennessee is doing. And yet, so far, he's handled it to a T. I'm not trying to be bare bad news, but if he ever has a rough day, it could be rough. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, because so much is expected, is right? Made. Your point is because he is he yeah. is the best in the country right now yeah. at doing that. Nobody has more on him yeah. than Hendon Hooker in this offense in the country. No quarterback has any more than he has. And you see, Watson, I, I was trying to warn people today because here's the narrative in town. And I'm just trying to be, you know, keep the car in the middle of the road from my perspective. Because even next year is year three for this young coach, you know, and his young staff. Because the narrative here is it's just going to keep getting better and better. You get better players, you get better results. You get better players, you get better results. And that all sounds good. But that's discounting (laughs) what you have at quarterback right there and what this guy's doing. Because this guy is making this look easy. Well, he, you know, he is he is the best in the country right now for his offense. And yeah. look at all the offenses in the country, Tony, yeah. right now that are struggling at quarterback. Yes. Tennessee, I'm not sure. Yeah, they're patting him on the back, and they know they got a good one. But I'm not sure they know all he's doing. And that's my uh, point. Yeah. And, and the other thing he's the best at is throwing the deep ball. Mm-hmm. I'm a big proponent of how to throw a deep ball. Mm-hmm. how to coach throwing a deep ball. Mm-hmm. He does everything that I believe in to a T. If you watch him, when he lets a deep ball go, your head has to be completely still and focused on the target. The deep ball target is more of a focus than a short ball target because the further the ball goes, the more it has to be precise. You watch this kid play, his head never moves. I don't care if there's bodies around him. I don't care if he's sliding in the pocket. His head is completely still staring at the target. And I think he is the best deep ball thrower in the in the country. They've got the best quarterback right now in the country, and he's doing things that other guys can't even consider doing that I see. Just keep him healthy and hope he doesn't have bad game because so much is on him and what they do. A bad game could be tough on their offense by him. Which is, a, you know, again, he's just been so good. Oh, and no, he I hasn't tell. been good. He's been great. And, if, and, and look, let's just call it what it is. If it wasn't for the fact that that Stroud guy was way up here in that Heisman race, like way up here, he would be the guy that everybody's taught him out in the country. If he, makes, he, it to the, if yeah. he makes it to the final four, he wins the Heisman. I'm telling you right now. If they make the playoffs. If he makes it to the final four, okay. Hendon Hooker will pass Stroud and win the Heisman Trophy. You're, so you're telling me that even if, like, let's say hypothetically Tennessee loses to um, Georgia in a couple weeks, right? But they win them all. They go 11-1, and they get in however they're going to get into that playoff. You're telling me that he's going to win the Heisman Trophy. Yes, because his stats are better than everybody's. And and yeah. and everybody is learning slowly what all he has to do for this right. team. Right. I'm, if he don't make it there, no. But if if they get in the final four, yeah, uh, I think he wins the whole thing. So I was like wondering today, in in the modern era of what we've seen here, and, and I can only speak for being here, but I was trying to think back to Manning, you know, in the '90s and how good he was in their offense. But I don't know that he was as good as this guy is. No. And and I know that's crazy to say, right? This guy is performing at a level where in these big games, he's just not making mistakes. I mean, he's just not doing it. He's Tony Tennessee in their history has never been where they are. And the reason everybody's so excited about them, their offense is so dynamic. They're number one in the country in everything and in everything. Yeah. And, this is the best they've had it. I mean, yeah. And it's all because of number five, Peyton Manning. Yes. I put him right there with him though. I put him right there with Peyton Manning and right. And uh, Peyton had a long career. Hendon's had a year and a half. So there is a little right. difference, but right. But I still put him right there with Peyton as the best quarterback of all time. He's got to stay healthy and he's got to keep playing like he's playing. And as a coach, all you can mm-hmm. do is, Cross those fingers and hope it keeps up because every week I see him putting a little more on him, Tony. Every week. Good. This started out as just a little bit on him, and it's reached a point now where he totally runs the show. I'll bet you he doesn't have six, seven plays a game where, okay, call the play and hand the ball off. Bet he don't have six or seven a game that he don't have major decisions to make mm-hmm. on every play that they're running. How about that now? Only six or seven a game. 
that he's not. Look at Stroud. He's handing the ball off a lot more. He's not mm – -hmm. I'm telling you, he don't have all the things that right. this Tennessee staff has put on Hooker because they know the better he seems to get, the more they put on him. Right. You, you told me, because I listened to you, back in August when we first met on here, you say, hey, look, last year when they put him in games, they just inserted him in there and let him play on instinct, and they gave him a little bit each week, a little That's, more. It's little so more. further now, Tony. It's not even close. You go get tapes out and, and see what they made him do a year ago at, yeah. earlier than this, but not a lot earlier than this when he right. first started playing. Right. And see what he's doing now. <laughs> it's, they've put a lot more on him. So let me ask you this. So you're Kentucky. You're sitting in their defensive room. How are we going to stop him? What are you going to do this week? You, you, you think it's going to be a close game. You're telling, me, you're telling me this is a spot game for Tennessee, and I want to believe you. But I don't see any of these defenses slowing these guys down. So what does Kentucky do to slow them down defensively? What do they Just, do? Try to make a stop somewhere along the way and don't give up the big plays everybody's giving up. You can't give up. Tennessee is getting huge big plays yeah. every game. They can't give up the number of big plays, and they've got to run the ball and keep the ball. That's yeah. it. If they can't do those two things, yeah. look out. It's double-digit win again. So, so I have a really astute guy on my show, Matt Dixon, who's a real sicko. You'd love him because he goes back and watches old games. He went back and watched every game of Heupel's at Central Florida. Mm -hmm. took copious notes. I said, Matt, how did the programs that stopped him there, because some did, how'd they stop him? Tulsa particularly. And then Cincinnati one time. We were talking about today, in fact. He said, Tony, what they did is they rushed three and they got home with three. The teams that beat Tennessee had to, in odd number situations, win with their defensive line. He said, the other teams that gambled or did, you know, or went out of their comfort zone or weren't able to drop numbers. He said they just got picked apart. That's what I'm saying. Stop the big play. You can't give up the big plays against Tennessee. They're getting yeah. so many easy scores. Yes. Just with great talent. Yeah. They're beating people one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, people are going to try to keep the ball in front and try to mm -hmm. keep the ball and shorten the game. Mm -hmm. I don't see any other way to beat them. You've got to stop the big play, and you've got to keep the ball away from them. Because Saban, Saban, like you said last week, Saban just took it, which was really uh, weird. It was he weird. Got out, he got out coached so bad that it's not even worth talking about. I say that respectfully because he's out coached a bunch of folks. But last two Saturdays ago, he got out coached big time. I mean, it's got to be like a top five bad day for him, right? He would tell you if you pulled him aside. I mean, he would admit that, right? Oh, yeah. You know that, what's going that on, right? That day he flunked Drew Brees in the physical. In Miami. <laughs> <laughs> what a, what a That's great a good one, George. It's true, though, isn't it? I it just came out true. of nowhere with that, didn't I? Uh, He'd probably true. blame that on somebody else, George. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Team doctor. Tony, I got two TV questions before we end this. Number one, you heard me last week say the Tennessee-Alabama game drew over a 25 share here. And no Titans game has gotten over a 23. First of all, what kind of number is Tennessee football getting on TV in Knoxville? I, I'm sad to tell you, I don't know that. I know it's huge. <laughs> I know it's like otherworldly. Um, they're already running pro the, the local CBS affiliate here because they have the game, as sure. you know. And, they, and this week's an ESPN game. They're already running promos for the uh, pre and post that they're the adjacencies that they're selling around uh, the Tennessee, Georgia oh game. Oh my God. That's and what Georgia, I'm telling you. Be careful. See the Georgia, and, and the, and the Kentucky people, <laughs> some of the media that are here already have noticed that and they're tweeting about it and they're talking I'm telling about you. it. But guys, and George will tell you this from being in this, in this industry, you got they're to. just trying to make money. They yeah, it's all, all about this. this. That's, that's why I think there's more on Josh Heupel this week. That's why I said early, there's yeah. more on Josh Heupel this week than any game he's had so far. The That's media has ever right to do that. But so Josh has got to keep his players from reading and listening to all that. Yeah, Tony, let me ask you this, and then we'll call sure. it a day. Did CBS consider, and I don't know the rule apparently as well as I thought I did, right. did they consider putting that at night, Tennessee, Georgia? 
they have two they have two of those a year they right. already used one i think they have to designate before the year what the two primetime games are is my belief i think and that's what happened the last know. time yeah but i'll tell you this i don't understand and i'm a homer and and kind of i don't really care because Either way, these are five-hour football games we play. But all those games on CBS last five hours. All, I don't care who you – I mean, literally, the red hat guy, the guy that walks on that field with the red hat, I mean, you just want to take a salt gun and shoot at the guy. You don't sting him in his legs a little bit. Get off the damn field. Anyway, so um, – That's I'll tell beautiful. You, you guys tell me, how can you take the Florida-Georgia game – and choose that over this Kentucky Tennessee game. Well, didn't they do it before the season started? I don't know. Did that? Yeah. I'll I bet you that one, Tony, is set in stone. Probably. Before they ever play. But you have to, I mean, at some point, don't you have to adjust? Tennessee just hit a huge, huge number with Alabama. That was a huge number. Oh. Uh, touching 16 million at its peak in college football? Massive. An NFL like number? I, mean, that's crazy. I don't. I don't care who Tennessee is playing right now. Their numbers are going to be high, and it don't matter what when it is. Yeah. They're going to be high because they're really good, and they're fun to watch. They are fun to watch. People are going to watch them play. And they just announced to Watson's point, you want to add a little more? They're they're doing what they're calling dark mode this week. They're wearing dark jerseys with a black helmet with with an orange tee on it. Oh, geez. To add more. (laughs) More Tony, to worry about. after it's over, which will probably be about one in the morning. Thanks, George. You're welcome. Um, where can they hear your post game? Yeah, so we're available at tclub.team. I've got a blog up there every day. We have a couple thousand words today, some stuff tomorrow, every day. Um, and we blog every day. And then as soon as, the, as soon as these games are over, football, basketball, we're live and we're talking about it. And, um, Last week, we only went about three hours and 15 minutes after UT Martin because my lovely wife said, if you stay on, so help me. If you stay on longer than three hours for UT Martin, I'm going to get you committed. So, By the way, she's right. She is right. She's right. She is right. Thank you for doing this. Go, hey, Phil. I'm going to be rooting for you. It's a real blessing. Yeah, thanks. The good guys. Cheer for the good guys. Thank Bingo. You.